Humans have many achievements to be proud of. Our environment has been modified to serve our requirements. Even now we're planning to colonize other planets after we outgrow this one. Being at the top is fantastic, but it's easy to lose sight of our limitations. After all, the human brain is designed to think in particular ways. Despite being among the best on the planet, the human brain has a lot of difficulties understanding certain issues. Although humans have developed a fairly particular conception of reality, there are several paradoxes that indicate reality may not operate exactly as we believe it to. There are many confounding mysteries in the world, such as time-traveling pool balls and information-eating black holes. What are these paradoxes? Do they have any possible solutions? Let's find out. Number 1. The Fermi Paradox Where are the aliens? This is a question that the Fermi Paradox attempts to address. According to the theory, aliens should have previously visited Earth, given that our solar system is relatively young compared to the rest of the universe – 13.8 billion years versus 4.5 billion – and that interstellar travel would be possible given enough time. The scientist Enrico Fermi, a winner of the Nobel Prize, is credited with coining the phrase during a luncheon chat in 1950. And ever since then, astrobiologists and other scientists have been baffled by the implications. The universe is extremely old and large. The observable universe is approximately 92 billion light-years across, according to data acquired by a number of telescopes, and it's growing faster and faster all the while. Additionally, other measurements show that it is roughly 13.82 billion years old. Aliens have thus had plenty of time to develop and disperse, but they will likely have to travel across a wide cosmic chasm to reach Earth. The only planets that were known to exist at the time Fermi made his infamous statement were those in our own solar system. However, in 1992, astronomers discovered planets revolving around a pulsar, a super-dense stellar corpse. The first exoplanet orbiting a Sun-like star was verified a few years later. Currently, there are more than 4,500 verified exoplanets, and new ones are discovered every year. The sheer quantity of extraterrestrial worlds raises the possibility that there may be a lot of life in the cosmos. Since there are so many potential solutions for the Fermi Paradox, both experts and laypeople have put forth literally hundreds of them over time. These concepts cover a wide range. For instance, researchers who examined data from the Hubble and Kepler satellite telescopes in 2015 came to the conclusion that Earth was probably a comparatively early bloomer. The researchers found that only 8% of the potentially habitable worlds that will ever exist in the universe existed at the time of Earth's formation, roughly 4.5 billion years ago. So that's one explanation for the paradox. The aliens will arrive eventually, but not just yet. Or maybe life is too flimsy to last very long. According to a 2016 study, the early history of a rocky planet can be particularly favorable to the emergence of life, which is thought to happen around 500 million years after the planet cools and liquid water becomes available. It's possible that there aren't many life forms in the cosmos because it's hard to maintain habitable conditions during the first billion years, not because life is hard to start. The bottleneck might also appear considerably later. Many intellectuals have hypothesized that civilizations might have a tendency to disappear soon after mastering technology. Earth, again, offers some evidence in favor of this assertion. During the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, humanity came perilously close to a nuclear war. Due to anthropogenic climate change, we may already be on the verge of wiping out much of the rest of the planet's life as well. There are also a lot of other things to think about. In fact, many extraterrestrial lives might not even be aware that there are other worlds to discover. Another factor that might be at play is alien psychology. There may be many advanced alien civilizations out there, but the majority of them may not be interested in contacting us or traveling to Earth. 
Perhaps Earth and its people simply don't interest them enough to play around with, and they won't until humanity proves itself intelligent and deserving enough to be included in the Galactic Club. Or perhaps the majority of sentient aliens seek to avoid contact with their cosmic neighbors out of fear that doing so might result in their own enslavement or annihilation. Many academics, including the late Stephen Hawking, have used these possibilities in their justifications for why humanity shouldn't aggressively promote its existence. The Fermi paradox most likely does not have a single solution. Number 2. The Black Hole Information Paradox The cosmos enjoys its information very much. It dislikes both the creation of new information and the destruction of any of its already existing information. In actuality, the word like is far too tepid. As far as we can determine, information simply exists across the cosmos. It neither creates nor destroys itself. We must first define what information is and why it needs to be kept. Determinism governs physics. We can forecast a system's future behavior using the principles of physics. Our understanding of physics enables us to make definite, trustworthy predictions that carry our knowledge from the present into the future, whether they are about a particle contained in a box, a complicated chemical reaction, or the entire cosmos. We can also explore the past using the same method. If we have complete knowledge of a system, the same physical rules that apply to the future also apply to the past, allowing us to easily advance or rewind time and observe how the system has acted or will behave in the future. We are able to jump to the conclusion that information is maintained because of this reversibility. The rules of physics explain how all of those particles will act in the past and the future if we know everything there is to know about a system, including all of the particles' locations, velocities, spins and electric charges. As a result, the system's basic data, or everything that can be known about it, is retained over time. It is just reorganized, not generated or destroyed. Black holes appear to treat the information in an innocent manner at first glance. Black holes collect matter and the data that is contained within them. Nothing ever enters a black hole from the perspective of an outside observer, such as us viewing safely from a distance. Of course, it's a little more involved than that, but that's enough to comprehend the current issue. Information is neither created nor destroyed, hence this predicament isn't all that serious. With the exception of when the black hole dissipates. This causes a minor issue. Black holes aren't completely black, as Stephen Hawking discovered for the first time in the 1970s. They do emit a very slight glimmer. Additionally, this radiation, aptly named Hawking radiation, is entirely thermal. It's just random heat, like the heat your body emits. This indicates that the only factors affecting the radiation's intensity and temperature are the black hole's mass, spin and charge. Nothing else. The Hawking radiation of a black hole is unaffected by anything else, including books, cats and spacecraft. This is great, since the information is still there and unbothered on the surface. However, as the black hole emits Hawking radiation, it loses energy, which causes it to lose mass, leading to ultimately vanish along with all the data it was holding. What would happen to all the knowledge if the Hawking radiation didn't cause it to seep out and the black hole disappeared? Hence, we have a paradox. The black hole information paradox is unsolved, but that hasn't stopped dreamy-eyed theorists from conjuring up a variety of possible answers over the years. Perhaps data is, in fact, retained. This may seem like a straightforward statement, yet it requires rewriting nearly the entire body of existing physics. Is it really worthwhile to rethink all of our physical knowledge only to account for this one unique scenario? especially since black holes are the only locations where we have encountered problems with this information-preserving concept. 
But it's not like we have never had to rewrite all of physics. Black holes are fascinating objects, so it's not like it would be the first time. Or perhaps Hawking's radiation isn't as great as it seems. Perhaps the data clinging to the black hole surface does eventually find its way into the radiation that is released. Perhaps Hawking's first analysis was oversimplified and we could painstakingly rebuild the books, kittens and spacecraft that dropped in by carefully observing the radiation. Although this would save all of known physics, a good means to actually make this happen has yet to be discovered. Perhaps this information doesn't stick to the surface but is instead left behind as a crunchy nugget right when the black hole is about to evaporate completely. Again, we have very little to no concept of how this would actually function, despite the fact that it sounds nice. Perhaps it's something even stranger, like information that travels through time or space and ends up in a parallel universe. The puzzle is intriguing since every possible solution introduces new physics. The universe will be revealed to us in a new way if we are able to solve the paradox. Number 3. The Schrodinger's Cat Paradox What does it feel like to be both alive and dead? In the 1960s, American-Hungarian physicist Eugene Wigner was bothered by and inspired by this subject. The paradox is created by quantum physics, the theory regulating the microscopic world, which contends, among other paradoxical ideas, that a quantum system does not necessarily have definite qualities until it is observed, frustrated him. Consider the classic thought experiment by his fellow physicist Erwin Schrödinger, which a cat is imprisoned in a box containing a poison that will spill out if a radioactive atom decays. According to the story, as radioactivity is a quantum process, the atom has both decayed and not decayed before the box has opened, leaving the poor cat in a state of so-called superposition between life and death. But does the cat feel like it is in two places at once? By picturing a human buddy of his isolated in a lab, measuring a quantum system, Wigner clarified the problem. He claimed that it was ridiculous to claim that his companion is simultaneously in a state of having seen and not having observed the deterioration up until the moment Wigner unlocks the lab door. The Wigner's friend thought experiment demonstrates that if the observer is also being observed, things can get quite strange. Before the advent of quantum physics in the 1920s, Physicists believed their theories to be deterministic, producing precise predictions for the results of experiments. However, it appears that quantum theory is probabilistic by nature. The then prevailing theory, according to Wigner, was that consciousness somehow causes a superposition to collapse. As a result, when his imaginary body took a measurement, they would be able to tell the result for sure and Wigner would never see them in superposition. Over the years, a number of rival quantum interpretations have emerged, which use less mystical mechanisms, including decoherence, to explain how superpositions fail without involving awareness. Other interpretations take the even more extreme stance that there is absolutely no collapse. Each approaches Wigner's exam in a peculiar and amazing way. The most far-fetched theory is that the many worlds theory, which claims that any time a quantum measurement is made, reality splits into parallel universes to account for all potential outcomes. Because of this, Wigner's acquaintance would be divided into two copies and, with good enough super technology, he could really measure that person to be in superposition while they were outside the lab. For the time being, physicists will have to continue to debate on which interpretation is correct or whether a brand new theory is required. Number 4. Faint Young Sun Paradox According to researchers, global warming gases cannot explain why Earth did not freeze out billions of years ago when the sun was colder. 
The sun was only around 70% as bright in the Archeon Eon, roughly two and a half to four billion years ago, before the first complex life forms developed on the planet. This indicates that the heat felt on Earth was far lower than expected, and the surface of Earth should have been frozen. But ancient rocks in Isua, close to Greenland's southwest coast, show that liquid water and even life existed on Earth around 3.8 billion years ago. In order for life to exist, the climate of Earth had to be somewhere between the freezing point and boiling point of water, which means it was probably rather near to the current temperature. The faint young sun paradox refers to the discrepancy between the temperate Earth that appears to have been and the cold Earth that appears to have existed. Up until recently, the most widely accepted theory to explain the mystery was that the atmosphere then had more greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, than it does now. These gases assist in warming the globe by absorbing solar heat. The quantities of greenhouse gases would have needed to be hundreds to thousands of times higher than they are now in order to explain the feeble young sun conundrum. The puzzle is now further complicated as researchers examine relatively unaltered 3.8 billion year old rocks from a sewer and discover no proof that greenhouse gas concentrations were high enough to account for the flimsy young sun paradox. Researchers focused on mineral formations called serpentine, which are created when ancient seawater interacts with deep ocean crust, the outer layer of the Earth. These deposits preserve information about the water, including its hydrogen and oxygen isotope ratios, which are dependent in part on ocean size. Isotopes are variations in the number of neutrons in an atom of the same element, such as hydrogen. Since lighter hydrogen isotopes are more likely to be discovered in the atmosphere and escape into space than heavier ones, the concentration of light isotopes in ocean waters decreases with increasing ocean size. These gradually diminish to their current sizes as hydrogen, one of the essential components of water, escaped to space and seawater was trapped in newly created continental rocks. Methane and carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere, two greenhouse gases that can have complex interactions with hydrogen and other gases like oxygen, are related to the rate of hydrogen escape to space. Based on these results, the researchers' projected hydrogen loss rate indicates that the concentrations of these greenhouse gases were nowhere near high enough to resolve the enigma of the youthful feeble sun. A different explanation for the faint young sun paradox is that there were fewer continents early in Earth's history because some had not yet formed. This would have resulted in less land mass, which would have resulted in less cloud cover because there would have been fewer biologically produced particles like pollen and spores that could act as seeds around which the clouds could form. As a result, the world, which is primarily covered by oceans, became darker and, like an asphalt road on a hot day, was able to absorb much more heat, keeping the Earth comfortable. What scenario do you have regarding these paradoxes? Do you know of any other universe enigmas? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.